From its origins in Italian East Harlem, with many of its founding members having emigrated from Palermo and Corleone, Sicily, and later expanding out into the Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, New Jersey, South Florida, and elsewhere, the Lucchese family has always been considered a major force within the greater New York City metropolitan area. And although traditionally the smallest of the infamous five families, with an estimated formal membership of 130 members and over 500 associates, from its first leader Gaetano Reina to Gaetano Galliano to family namesake Gaetano Lucchese himself, on down through Carmine Tremonti and including Anthony Corallo. This Brigada has always enjoyed the benefit of having a capable, intelligent leadership who directed their membership into the pivotal control of many of New York's most important industries and rackets. The Lucchese Brigada had the envied reputation of always being one of the most internally peaceful, well-run, and wealthiest of the five families. They boasted a powerhouse lineup of such mob legends as the infamous John Johnny Dio Diaguardi, Vincent Rayo, Paul Verio Sr., John Big John Armento, Vincent Jimmy Doyle Plumieri, and Joseph Joe Beck de Palermo, to name but a few. Through their successful infiltration, domination, and ironclad control of many key labor unions and varied industries, such as Major Teamsters Locals, the International Ladies' Garment Workers Union, and the Laborers' Union of North America, among many other industry unions, the Lucchese's have leveraged this control to dictate to entire segments of the business world. The garment district at an unprecedented scale, the nationwide air freight industry at JFK Airport and building construction are but a few of the industries held captive by the Lucchese family for decades. What follows is a rogues gallery featuring various members and key associates of the Lucchese crime family. But before I begin, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave us a comment after you've watched the video. Newspaper executive and Lucchese hoodlum William Willie Fellow is seen here in this 1959 photo. He and his brothers controlled the newspaper rackets for capo Tony Dux Corallo and family boss Tommy Lucchese. The Fellow brothers operated from their base in Corona, Queens, and were eventually pinched for extortion after they shook down newspaper delivery firms. Longtime Lucchese soldier James Jimmy Black Falco served under iconic family boss Anthony Corallo for years. He and his brother Felice Philly Black Falco were active in policy, shylocking, and jukebox rackets. An early photo of the Corleone born Stefano Steve LaSalle La Sala. He was an important capo for years in the Reina Galliano Lucchese family. He later rose to become underboss to Tommy Galliano and Tommy Lucchese. A little known member of the Lucchese family was Whitestone Queens based soldier Thomas Tebals Mancuso. A Carmine Tremonti confidant, Tebals was active in policy, bookmaking, and narcotics. He also figured into a scandal with New York Jets quarterback Joe Namath in the early 1970s. Veteran Lucchese soldier Felice Philly Black Falco nabbed on loan sharking charges in 1967 by Suffolk County detectives. 1960s heroin merchant Louis Cirillo seen here in an early photo. He was a low-key Bronx bagel baker who was later discovered to also be the head of a multi-million dollar narcotics network. When federal drug agents raided his modest Bronx home, they dug up his front yard and also discovered over $1 million in cold hard cash hidden away for a rainy day. He went away for 40 years. Jacob Jack Mace Mazelish was a top New York hood and an associate of Lucchese capo Paul Corriale, also known as Polly Ham. Mace was considered one of the biggest receivers of stolen goods, fences, in New York City. Queens-based Lucchese soldier, alleged hitman, and convicted narcotics merchant Victor Panica. Low-key and a virtual unknown outside of the underworld, Joseph D'Urkel, also known as Joe Z, was another important East Harlem mafioso. He was once nabbed for heading a huge multi-million dollar car theft ring. Tony Moon, true name Anthony Ciccone, was another Harlem alumni and narcotics dealer. The FBN also named him as a Lucchese soldier. Salvatore Loproto, also known as Sally the Blonde. Based in East Harlem, Sally was a minion of narcotics big, Big John Armento. He was once nabbed in his car with having pistols with silencers attached. John Armento was with him. They were suspected of being on their way to commit a homicide at the very moment of their arrests. 
East Harlem veteran soldier Salvatore Sally Shield Shilatani. Early 1950s photo of Corona Queens based Lucchese hoodlum Rocco Barney Fellow. He and his two brothers were most active as bookies and labor racketeers for their takeover and exploitation of the newspaper and mail delivery union and a related industry association in partnership with notorious Prohibition era hoodlum Irving Itzy Bits. Fellow served in the regime of Capo Anthony Corallo. East Harlem native Frank Borelli, also known as Frankie the Hawk, was a prolific drug dealer who handled multi-kilo lots of heroin for years. Borelli figured into several major drug conspiracy cases over the years. 1940s-50s era Galliano Lucchese mafioso Settimo Accardi, also known as Big Sam, was a major New Jersey-based counterfeiter and large-scale narcotics importer receiving his product from French chemists. He operated for years before he was indicted in a very serious airtight case. There were rumors in the streets at the time that the mob suspected Sam might have talked because of the light sentence he'd received. It was never proven out if he provided any information. Prominent Suffolk County businessman and Lucchese associate John Del Mastro is shown here after testifying before a mob grand jury about his shady dealing with mobsters, corrupt politicians, and businessmen. In his prime, Jimmy Plumeri was a force to be reckoned with. He was among the top hoods in the city. Never known for having Errol Flynn good looks to begin with, these two gritty photos show Paul Vario circa 1971 and again after his jailing in the 1980s. He was an important mafioso for decades and one of two powers who controlled the Brooklyn and Long Island areas for the family. 1960s Police Mugshot of Tony Ducks Known as one of the most capable and prolific labor racketeers in the nation, Corallo would be voted in as boss soon after his release from jail, a position he held until his 100-year prison sentence in the famed commission case. Anthony Torti Tortorello was a longtime fixture in the Mulberry Street area. Antonio Tibos Pinto was another trusted minion of the East Harlem crew serving under Big John Ormento. He was a convicted heroin dealer also on the national list by the FBN. Joseph Babo Vento was a Harlem-based, little-known soldier related through marriage to Vinci Rayo. He was said to dabble in the numbers and narcotics trade in the 1950s-60s era for which he had several arrests and was listed by the FBN as a known dealer. Joseph Joe Beck de Palermo in a prison mugshot. Whitestone Queens-based capo Carmine Mr. Gribbs Tremonti led the troops during the early 1970s period until he went down on a 15-year term for heading a vast heroin trafficking ring. He also died in jail. Another Harlem Bronx native and sometime partner of John Armento was Salvatore Tom Mix Santoro. He was sent away on a 20-year bid for heroin dealing in 1959. Santoro later rose to the hierarchy for a few years under Corallo until he received another 100-year bid in the commission case. He also died in jail. Vincent Vinci Rayo took over as consigliere after Stephen LaSalle for the Brigada. He was another powerful entity up in East Harlem. Gaetano Galliano, also known as Tommy, was only the second capo of this Brigada, Gaetano Reina being the first. After his smooth 20-year run at the top and his death, the family mantle was bloodlessly passed to the third Gaetano, Lucchese, who this crew was permanently named after. For over 50 years, this group ran under the radar and was relatively bloodless for a mafia family. That all changed after Tony Corallo was jailed. Bernard Edelstein, a Long Island garbage union racketeer and Lucchese associate. Ettore Little Eddie Coco. He was a top capo, feared and well-respected, and a boxing rackets boss also active in Miami. Eddie would serve a life sentence after he shot a black parking lot attendant dead in Miami one evening when the guy backtalked him. Dominic the Gap Petrilli, an old-time Galliano Lucchese soldier and original sponsor of Joe Valachi into the life. Petrilli would eventually go bad and get himself clipped. Soldier and top garment racketeer Gaetano Tommy Dio Diaguardi, Johnny's brother. Queen soldier Nicholas the Baron Bonina. Longtime Little Italy hoodlum Dominic Crazy Dom Trucello. 
For years, he was a member of Joe Beck de Palermo's Prince Street crew and would later be named to take over the regime. With a newly formed commission, this 1930s photo is of the newly minted family underboss Tommy Brown. New Jersey hood Anthony Tumak Asaturo leaving federal court with his wife in 1976. Late 1980s, FBI surveillance photo of underboss Anthony Casso and key capo Al Diarco going on a walk talk in front of the La Donna Rosa Ristorante and Cleveland Place in Manhattan's Little Italy. Both would end up becoming federal informants. 1980s court photo of consigliere Christopher Christie Tick for Nari. 1957, Tony Ducks being uncooperative with the Senate Rackets Committee probing the New York City Teamsters Union. I respectfully decline. At that same 1957 Senate Rackets hearing, Johnny Dio invoked the Fifth Amendment more than 100 times. Vinnie Beans for Siri as he appeared in the Pulitzer Prize award-winning Newsday series The Heroin Trail. Mafiosi to the Third Power Consigliere Stefano LaSalle, Los Angeles boss Jack Dragna, and New York boss Tommy Lucchese circa 1947. A very rare picture indeed. This 1920s, 1930s picture is a family boss, Gaetano Reina, with his wife and children in this form of photo celebration. Don't take that picture or I'm going to crack your head wide open. News photographers snuck up on labor racketeer in Lucchese Hood, Harry Davidoff, as he left his Roslyn home to get into his car. The volatile little Gangy would have none of it, too. That photographer didn't know how close he came. A handsome and ever dapper Johnny Dio. Nationally known, Dio was one of the most important and influential labor racketeers this country has ever known. But he died young. Had he lived, he most likely would have ascended to the family throne. And a snarling Johnny Dio. Vincent Papa, one of the most notorious and voracious heroin dealers to operate in this country. Operating from Astoria, Queens, he was a major supplier to all the families for many years until his subsequent arrest, conviction, and imprisonment. He would later be stabbed to death in Atlanta Federal Penitentiary. Unable to pin the Lufthansa robbery on him, Jimmy Burke would be continually indicted and convicted on other various charges, including sports bribery, narcotics, and murder, and sent away where he would die in prison. Surveillance pic of downtown member Anthony Tony Croce. 1950s, getting booked on narcotics charges, East Harlem powerhouse John Big John Armento and his regime soldier Nicholas Big Nose Nick Tolentino. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Mob Fireside Chat. Before we say goodbye, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave us a comment. And be sure to check the Button Guys website at www.thenewyorkmafia.com to read the full bios on some of the hoodlums mentioned in this rogues gallery, as well as many, many more stories on mobsters and mafia history. Thank you for watching. Until next time.